was literally just the perfect thriller and I can't put that in any better words if I'm being honest. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Francesca's books. My name is Francesca, these are my books and here we talk everything thriller books. Do you know what I've decided guys? I actually just love booktube. Like I've been on booktok for years and years and more recently bookstagram but booktube is just where it's at. Like I can literally just come here and just chat absolute basically. I don't know if you're on swear on YouTube. And you guys are amazing as well. Like everyone comments on my videos. I can actually interact with you guys. It's just brilliant. Like I'm here for booktube. So today we are talking what I read in March and my April TBR. Here's what I made earlier. I read 10 books in March, six of them were physical and four were on my Kindle. So I had a pretty good reading month. Normally I read like seven or eight books. So I think 10's a pretty good number. I was pretty impressed with myself and I realized how many I'd read this month. So I'm gonna quick fire review the 10 books that I read in March. And then I'm gonna talk about the eight books that I want to read in April. So get a brew and let's go. Of course I have my brew. <laughs> as I do every single time I sit down to film. I'm gonna start on my least favorite and go all the way to my most favorite. And spoiler, there is two five-star books this month. They're my first books that I've rated five-star in this entire year, and I'm so excited to share them with you. And I don't think they'll be what you expect either. So without further ado, the lowest rated book that I read in March was Suicide Med by Frida McFadden. I am slowly making my way through Frida's backlist. It feels like it's taking ages. I only have two books left after this month, you'll be pleased to know. But this was one of the ones I included in March. So it follows five students and a professor who go to this medical school with a reputation of unaliving. I mean, it doesn't look good for them, if I'm being honest. And all I have to say about this book is just absolutely how stupid it is. <laughs> like, some of Freedom of Adam's books, you think, oh my god, that would literally never happen, or like, oh my god, that didn't tie up very well, but this one was just off the scale. I think this is the lowest Freedom of Adam book I've ever rated. So it was told from all these points of view, like one at a time, which I actually quite liked. I didn't think I would, but the way they all kind of linked together was quite good. However, the book started with something like that happened at the beginning, and then it felt like halfway through, Frida just decided to just write a about something else and the actual first thing was never even really concluded and also this book was like 550 pages so for a thriller book like you're committing so yeah I just wasn't a fan two and a half next up another freedom of fan book it's done after this trust me but this one was the x and I rated it three so this follows our main character Joel who breaks up with his girlfriend right at the start of the book and then he meets Cassie in a bookstore and things just start to get all sorts of crazy there is quite a few characters to keep up with in this book and it can be tricky to keep track of them all so I would be paying attention when reading this one this was just okay like it did wrap up at the end quite nicely and it was good it just was okay it wasn't anything amazing I read it I'm glad I read it but I won't read it again definitely not but the main positive for me was that the main character was actually called Francesca I mean she's not a nice character but I mean <laughs> holding up a mirror okay so now we're starting to get onto the better book so next up was Not a Happy Family by Shari Penner, and I gave this three and a half this is a very Cluedo-esque book right up to the point where they're actually a wealthy family as well this book follows Fred and Sheila Merton who are found unalive and the last people to see them alive were their children and their spouses and also the maid this was a good read I read it on a plane and it was a very like light read and it was perfect for like what I needed it for it was good it just wasn't amazing it was like very much a murder mystery as opposed to a thriller but I did like it and I really do like Shari's writing as well next up was Artificial Wisdom which was a brand new release this month and I gave it a three and a half this is a near future thriller which I did actually really enjoy some of the topics in it were quite complex and you had to be like really paying attention to read this book but it was good so it's set in 2050 and the world on the verge of electing its first dictator as opposed to like a government I'm one of the candidates is AI. So the story follows Marcus Tully who's a journalist and his wife was unalived in climate genocide and it's kind of how all this links together in like a near future tone of voice. This was so thought-provoking and it was actually really eerie because some of the stuff that happened in this could just genuinely happen in real life so for that I rated it higher. And the actual writing style I did enjoy but it was quite a heavy read so it wouldn't be my first choice. But I did enjoy it. And the final 3.5 was Confessions by Kide Minato. Apologies if I said that wrong. So this is a Japanese translated thriller which was really really good and it was really interesting to see like the diversity in this. It follows a mother who's also a teacher in middle school and her daughter was unalive by some of her students. And the whole theme of the book is basically teaching them a lesson because I mean she's a teacher and they literally killed her kid. Like although I only rated this three and a half it will not leave me anytime soon. It was very very thought-provoking and extremely well written. But something just didn't click for me to rate it higher and I can't even really tell you what that is. <laughs> And into the four star reads, we have The Return by Rachel Harrison. This is definitely more of a horror thriller and I did not know that going in. So I was shocked by some of the twists this took. So it follows Julie who goes missing for two years and then one day she reappears on her porch, like has no idea what's happened and has no memory of the last two years whatsoever. So her friends decide to take her on like a little spa break to try and reconnect and just see if she wants to open up about things and just really be there for her. And it literally goes 
off. I did actually really enjoy this book, even though it wasn't my typical read because of how easy it was to read. Like if you were in a reading slump, pick up this book. It was just so, so easy. Like I just kept reading and I didn't even realize how many chapters I was getting through. It was really good for that. The actual plot, I kind of figured where it was going pretty early on, but it was still really good and I would recommend it. Next up is Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead and this got a four and a half from me. Now, don't get me wrong, my favorite book of hers is definitely In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. This was a Dark Academia book, which I much enjoyed the actual content of. Even though I probably gave them the same rating, this book was good in a very different way. In my opinion, this is not a thriller book. It is a murder mystery slash gothic romance. And if you know that going in, you will just absolutely love it. If books aren't like a classic thriller, I've tried to stop rating them low and actually just taking my opinion on what I actually think of the book because I'm so, I'm so much of a thriller lover that if it's not like a classic thriller, I have this tendency to like rate it lower. But this does deserve a four and a half for the genre that it actually fits in, a hundred percent. So this follows Ruth, our main character, who is the daughter of the reverend of a really Christian town in South Louisiana called Bottom Springs. And it also follows Everett, who is our closest friend and definitely an outsider of the town. There's all sorts of secrets and subplots going on in this book. As I say, it's not a classic thriller, but it is really good and there is some twists in it as well. The ending of this book just absolutely destroyed me. I finished it on audio and I was literally just sat in the car like, I literally need to pull over right now. I also really enjoyed the aspects of like how thin the line is between good and evil. It was really well represented in this book. Then another four and a half from me was The Quiet Tenant. I absolutely loved this. And if the ending was just like a little bit different, it definitely would have been a five. So this follows a really beloved small town guy who's actually a serial and alive and has a woman who's been locked in his shed for five years without his family knowing. It's told from three points of view, mainly from the woman in the shed, but also this girl that he starts seeing and from his daughter. If you've ever read The Last Thing to Burn by Will Dean, you'll kind of understand the concept of this book. It's very much told from like the survivor's point of view. However, this book was done so much better in my opinion. I didn't actually enjoy The Last Thing to Burn but this was incredible. I highly recommend this book. The ending just was not satisfying enough for me. I mean, there's so many ways this could have gone and I just wish it would have had a more happy ending and a more positive ending. The ending was okay. Like it, it wrapped up really nicely, but I just wanted so much more for our main character. And then two five-star books. Can you even believe it? The first one, is Home for Dark by Riley Sager. I've never read this. Why have I never read this? I have no idea. It was brilliant. This book borders on a horror, but it is definitely a thriller through and through. It follows Maggie who inherits a house that her family abandoned 20 years ago after her father passed away. The reason they fled was because of her father's paranormal accounts of like what happened in the house. So when she inherits it, she's like, yeah, I need to go back and see what happened. This book gave me the absolute chills, even though it wasn't like a through and through horror. I was looking over my shoulder and I read it home alone. I was a little bit scared. Riley Sager literally makes you feel like you are in this mansion with Maggie in this book. I can't explain it. There's just really something in it. I was really, really invested. And I got to the end of the book and I was literally like, I would change nothing about this story. And that is why it deserves a five star. Do, 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 do. Uh, I need some more coffee. And the second five star book of March is I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. This book came out 10 years ago and I still absolutely loved it with every fiber of my being. This was literally just the perfect thriller. And I can't put that in any better words, if I'm being honest. So if follows our main character Jenna whose life is completely shattered when five-year-old Jacob is involved in a hit and run right in front of her. So while the detectives in Bristol investigate exactly what's happened, Jenna cannot cope and she like runs away to the Welsh coast to try and get some headspace. She is just absolutely distraught. Now when I'm being recommended books, if anyone says the word detective, I'm like, no, like immediately no. But this book is the exception, like wholeheartedly. So I was actually invested in the detectives in this story. So Claire McIntosh has really like personified them. And instead of them just being detectives with like nothing else going, on apart from being a detective and like you wanted to skip those chapters you're really invested in those characters as well and this is the only book I've ever read that's done that really well it was gripping there was twists I didn't want to put it down it's just a perfect thriller in my opinion and it definitely deserves five stars so those are the 10 books that I read in March and what I rated them and next we'll go on to what I want to read in April so there's eight books that I'm planning on picking up in April and only three of them are paperback there is so many good kindle reads out at the moment and so many I've got for like on 99p deals that I just need to get through and need to read so the first book, because I have actually started it already because it is April 2nd today, is The Maid's Diary. I've been recommended this for the longest time and I've had it in paperback for the longest time and just never picked it up. And I am so glad that I did. I'm only halfway through and I'm absolutely loving it. This is gonna be a really strong contender for like best books this month. I can already feel it. So this follows a maid with a snooping problem and then one day she uncovers something that she literally can't undo and has to take action. I can't really say much more than that without giving like quite a lot of the spoilers away. 
but I'm really, really excited to finish it if that says anything. So this month, I'm going to complete Freedom Mac Fennon's backlist, but come hell or high water, it is being done, and the two books I have left are Brain Damage and Do You Remember? So Brain Damage, as you can probably guess on the tin, follows a really successful woman who literally has it all, and one day she has an accident and gets brain damage. I'm not really sure about the premise of this book. It doesn't sound like 100%, but it did actually have a really good Goodreads rating. And some of Freedom of Fanon books are quite low on Goodreads. So I was surprised when I saw it. So I will let you know. And then secondly is Do Not Remember. And this follows another woman who has brain damage, but this time it's from an injury and she has no memory of anything whatsoever and has to accept that like her new fate is just what people have told her that her life is about. And then one day she gets a note that's like, do not trust your husband. Shock. So those are both Kindle reads because they are on Kindle Unlimited and I'll let you know what I think and I cannot wait to do like a full Freedom McFadden wrap up video because I will have definitely read every book she's written. Another book that I want to read this month is The Couple at Number Nine by Claire Douglas. Claire Douglas is everywhere at the moment. She's just released another book called The Wrong Sister um, and I feel like she's just been talked about quite a lot and this is her most popular book so I really want to get to it. I've read The Girls Who Disappeared by her and I really enjoyed that so I'm not sure why I've never picked up the couple at number nine because it just seems to be the most popular book of hers. So it follows a couple who move into a new home and they're having renovations done and then they find two bodies under the house. It sounds a little bit like Keep It In The Family by John Mars but we will see and I'll let you know. Another book that I want to read this month is The Institution by Helen Fields. I've seen this cover around quite a lot but the concept sounds really good. So it follows a forensic profiler who goes undercover in a locked psychiatric facility to try and find a missing baby. I feel like this will be one of those that just has so many twists like you can't keep up and if so I know I will love it. I also want to read Good Bad Girl by Alice Feeney this month. This is the only book of hers I haven't read so I'm also really keen to get to that. This follows a baby's kidnapping and an unaliving in a care home and somehow these two events are linked. No idea how but that's the synopsis. Alice Feeney's books are a bit hit and miss for me. Some of them I really really enjoyed like Rock Paper Scissors and then some I was just like absolutely not like Daisy Darker. The next book that I want to read is Next of Kin by Kia Abdullah. So I've actually read Those People Next Door by Kia Abdullah and it was okay but it wasn't amazing. It was very socio-political. I don't think that's an adjective but that's that's what I can describe it as. So although this wasn't a 100% a hit for me I'm definitely going to try Next of Kin because it's been given so many five stars especially by book reviewers that I really really respect on BookTok, BookTube, Bookstagram etc. So this one follows a woman who forgets to drop her baby off at daycare and then by the time she remembers it's just like way too late like the horse has bolted. And then guys the final book is going to surprise you and I hope I do not lose your respect for this. I'm going to read this month House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas. Right, hear me out. I am a thriller girl. I am going nowhere with my thriller girlness. However, this is the closest thing to a fantasy thriller you're gonna get according to my research. I'm basically craving a book that's like the TV show Lucifer. Like, I can't lie. That show is like in my veins, like literally. And I think this is gonna be it. Side note, if you've never heard of Lucifer the TV show, please go watch it. It's on Netflix. It follows a police detective who is a really well-rounded character and has her own life who solves crimes with the devil, like the actual devil, Lucifer. And he is this guy who's like, I don't want to run hell anymore. I want to go to LA and party. And then he meets this detective and they literally just have like this like, on straight away and the banter it's just brilliant okay it's amazing i just love it anyway so i googled the books that are similar to lucifer and i also have wanted to dip a toe into the fantasy genre so this came at a really good time so this follows our main character who's had a tragedy happen to her and then she investigates said tragedy and somewhere along the way this angel hunt has to look after her like as a bodyguard because of i don't know something in the magical world that she has to be protected, I don't know. So I'm getting Chloe and Lucifer vibes. And it's also fantasy and it's also a thriller. So I, well, maybe not a thriller, maybe a mystery. But I'm gonna give it a go and I'm gonna report back because if anyone else in the same position as me and wants a thriller that's a little bit more on the edgy side, I don't know, maybe this could work. We're gonna find out anyway. But I will leave you with the thought of how long this book is um, and pray for me in April reading this book. Um, I don't actually know how long it is, maybe like 800 pages? 798 pages, so pray for me and I'll let you know if I get to it. Hopefully I'll get to it. So those are the books that I'm going to read this April. Let me know which is your most anticipated read of April as well and I'll see if I've read it before and can relate. And also let me know which is your favourite book of March because I'm always looking to add more to my TBR. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I really can't wait to see you guys next time. So much love.